In today's episode of the Midweek Ramble, I'm going to go ahead and do the thing that everybody's doing and sharing with you all of the knits I completed in 2023. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I finally decided, and not finally decided, I've always kind of been one that doesn't like to get on the bandwagon with topics. And even though I have videos that are of similar topics to other, you know, channels out there, whatever. But I always kind of see bandwagon videos and I think to myself, I don't want to do that. Well, I'm kind of putting my foot in my mouth or whatever. I don't even know what you want to call this. And I'm deciding to jump on the bandwagon with everybody else in knitting podcaster land and share with you what I completed in terms of knits or in the case of what's up top here, yarny related things in the year 2023. Now, it's important to know going into this that this is not a way for me to say, look at all of the things that have come forth from my creative endeavors, like not at all. This, in my opinion, is a very modest, humble stack of items here. A lot of them um, are, all of them are quite functional, which is a very big thing that draws me to my projects. However, this is not everything. Several of the things that I completed in 2023 are no longer with me because they were gifts for other people, friends, loved ones, teachers, um, what have you. And I will be sharing those in a little carousel roundup um, in just a moment. But I would like to do this because I would like to recap what I accomplished in 2023 because it's a way of running back through, I don't know, just the creative journey of my year last year. And I think that that's, I think that's special. And so for all of you out there who have been sharing these videos of all the things I knit in 2023, I think it's cool. I think that it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's fun to reflect. But for all of you that are watching those videos, I say this, and I think that this is really important. It's not a race. It's not a competition to knit the most sweaters or the most socks or whatever. It's not, um, it's not the Olympics of knitting. We're not trying to become the most prolific knitter, the one that doth knit most. It's just knitting what makes you happy, um, knitting how much makes you happy, and that's it and plain and simple. So that's, um, it's important to go forward knowing that, especially as I talk about some of these things today, because you're going to find that a lot of these things um, are really not all that complicated or extravagant. They're just things that I love, things that bring me joy, things that are functional and and that's what really matters most. So that is what we're going to get into today. Now, you may notice I am still in that same cozy location that I was in the last two videos. Um, I'm kind of just rolling with it right now. I'm not saying that this is where every video I record is going to be filmed. Um, however, I'm really enjoying sitting here at my table with the natural light on my face and in my eyes. Um, and, and I like it. I like giving you a different angle. So though I know we will be going back to the other um, perspective of my videos, this is just something I'm kind of rolling with right now. I'm enjoying it. Don't worry. It's not, we're not changing formats or anything. I know when you watch videos, people that you like, you, you like, excuse me, the visual perspective of what you're seeing. And if that changes, it kind of like throws things off. Don't worry. This is just me kind of going with it right now. So now I want to dive into this and I want to start this by sharing with you all the things that I accomplished in 2023, but that are no longer in my possession. And I'm going to do this in just a little bit of a kind of a photo parade, if you will, or a gallery walk of those things, pulling photos from social media and sharing them with you that way. I will put the name of the pattern, if there is one, at the bottom of the screen and all of these things will be linked down below the video in the description box. So without further ado, these are the things that I knit in 2023 that are living with loved ones or family or friends elsewhere. looked back on those projects, especially the socks I knit for my dad, the really pretty green ones, and the fire pit mitts that I knit for my mom, it's, I, I find 
that I look back so fondly on the things that I knit for other people. And I think that that's really special. I look back quite fondly on the things that I knit for myself, especially those things that I wear often and get a lot of use out of. But I love looking back on the small items and moments that were done for other people. I think that's really special. Okay, I'm ready to go ahead and dive into this stack. I'm not going to go in, um, what is it, uh, chronological order. We're not going to start with what I did first. I'm, I'm actually going to go in the order of what stacks nicest here and doesn't fall over. And so that means we are going to start with what is on the top. And this is not knitted uh, or knit. This is actually my very first skeins of hand spun. Now, if you've been with the channel for any length of time, well, at least for the last year, you know that for a period of time last spring, I dove in headlong into spinning. <laughs> I haven't done much of it since, but I have plans on pulling it out this spring. I feel like it's one of those seasons of creativity that I have. Spring kind of brings a whole new um, collection of things I get up to, creatively speaking. But this is what I created on my spinning wheel when I first got my spinning wheel and started dabbling in spinning yarn. So I'll show you this one first. This was my very first spin. And it's super lumpy and bumpy and thick and thin. The color is beautiful. I used um, just kind of a merino top that I had on hand from a while ago. And this is what I came up with. And the second one that I have here was my second go around in completing a complete uh, or creating a complete skein. And there it is here. And you know, I can't really remember. I have my computer pulled up in front of me so that I can tell you um, information about some of these things as I have it. So I want to tell you where the um, fleece, uh, excuse me, the fiber came for this or came from for this. This is, oh yes, this is One Thursday. So this is 100% Merino um, by One Thursday, who is Nicole. And it's in the New Hampshire colorway and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now this other one here is one that I had quite, it was a long time ago um, when I purchased this and I don't know no, I don't know where I got this from, but it is uh, Blueface Lester and Sorry Silk. And it's really beautiful. So those are the first items I'm sharing today, but I completed these in 2023 and just having them in my hands, squishing them, remembering the fiber when it came and it's, uh, uh, what is it, a big bump of fiber. It's starting to motivate me to bring the spinning wheel back out to the forefront of my office space here and get busy. So these are my very first hand spun and I definitely plan on revisiting this soon. Okay, I needed to adjust my camera settings because it was starting to get bright. It's cloudy here, um, but there was a momentary peek out of the sun brightening things up a little bit, but this should be a little better. Okay, the next thing I wanna share with you, I'm actually going to do these two together because they're both socks. So we're gonna share them together. And this is stripey socks number one and stripey socks number two. We'll start with stripey socks Number one, this is a pair of plain vanilla socks that I knit through December and I finished them in January of 2023. Oh, you know what it was? I was trying to knit a pair of socks by Christmas and so I started this pair of vanilla socks prior to Christmas with the intention of having them finished by Christmas and I did not get them finished by Christmas. They were finished just right after the new year and so they qualify as being something I finished in 2023 and, and that's what I'm really going for here. This is yarn by Nomadic Yarns. I love Nomadic Yarns. I cannot remember the name of this colorway. Chances are she wouldn't have it in the shop right now anyway. Um, if I can remember what the name of the colorway is, I'll link it down below. But for right now, this is Nomadic Yarn. Um, I They're my favorite self-striping yarns for sure. Now I knit these... I don't remember all the details of how I knit these. I did not take note and I should have. Um, but this is, I do know that this is a 64 stitch sock and I believe I knit them on a size two. And I regret having done that. No, I, no, I take that back. No, I think this is, no, it's a size one. And I knit my cuff and my sock on a size one. 
And for whatever reason, it stretched out like crazy. I have these on a pretty decent sized sock blocker and they're all flippy and, and stretched out. And I've worn them a lot, but they were pretty stretchy immediately after blocking. And I'm not sure exactly what the situation is with that because I knit the same size sock that I typically knit. They just stretched out a ton. So I don't wear them very much because when I do put them on, the ankles are real just baggy and loose and not very flattering. Um, so they are my socks by Christmas socks, my stripey socks, number one, but I don't really love them. The ones that I do love though are stripey socks number two. Now this is a pair of socks that I started a long time ago. I want to say 2021. That's not that long ago. Okay. But it, whatever, two years ago, um, three years ago. And I never finished them. I put them down and just never finished them. This is again, nomadic yarns. This I want to say is the Moana colorway or the honey bear colorway. I can't remember. Um, I'll put it down in the description box, but I love these socks. This is a BFL blend, which is a fantastic sock yarn. It's rustic feeling. There's a little bit of nylon in there. Oh, I love these so much. And another thing I really love about these is how long the leg is. You can see in comparison, it's so much longer. I love that. I wear these all the time. I wore these when we were just up in Brian Head, Utah. It was snowy and really cold and they're super toasty. You guys, I love these. So these are stripey socks number two, a plain vanilla sock with nomadic yarns. I'll link to them down below. Love these. Okay, this next one makes me smile. This was a fun project. One that, I don't know. I think that this was just a really special project. And that is my little sewing tote that I made for the something old, something new to knit along here on the channel back, I want to say, oh my goodness, when was that? I want to say that was June, May or June. And I'm going back to check that I finished this early June and I love it. I have yet to really put it to much use, but it's always kind of sitting in my office and craft space on my shelf back over here where I keep my yarn and my project bags. And I smile every time I see it. I made this out of recycled yarn for half of the fabric and then um, yarn that I had in my stash. So this is bamboo yarn that I used um, in th uh, one, two, three, four different colors. So the colors you see are this Lion Brand. I don't know if it was Lion Brand, but it's 100 percent. Um, no, it's not bamboo. What was this? Pima cotton. I apologize. This is 100% Pima cotton and I cannot remember for the life of me where I got it because even at the time that I started the project, I didn't have any band uh, balls for that. But those, um, that yarn in four different colors made up the stripes and I paired with it this yarn that I harvested from a thrifted sweater um, back when we were doing this knit along and I'll be popping pictures in here so you can kind of see what we did over there. But we were creating something using something old and something new. And for me here, the something old were the handles that were part of my grandma's sewing tote that was over 90 years old. I wanted to repurpose these and give it a fresh new tote portion, create a new tote by knitting a new bag portion to the tote. And that's exactly what I did. And I also, and I kind of improvised. So this whole tote section that you see here, I improvised this. I figured out the shaping, the sizing, everything, even this little like squared off boxy seam at the bottom, all of that I just kind of improvised. There's a whole series of videos um, about this process and I'll link to that down below. But all of this was done to kind of provide another tote portion of this bag that used to be my grandma's. And the fabric I removed, I saved, and I actually have it, it's behind me. You know what, let me see. Let's go over here. See if I can take this off the wall easily. Here you go, okay. Sometimes I hang things on the wall using that 3M tape and then it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it off. But I saved the fabric from the original tote in this framed, frame situation here to kind of preserve it. I know the white is not the best and I have yet to change it out, but right now it's pressed in here and I love seeing it. And this is the new version. So that was my something old, something new project that we did here on the channel as a knit along. You need to go back and watch those videos because a lot of, so many great projects came in for that knit along. It was so inspiring, but this was mine and I love it. So yeah, that's my little sewing tote in honor of my grandma for the something new, something old make-along.
Okay, I'm officially loving this whole process. I honestly didn't think I would enjoy going back over all of this, but this is fun. Okay, we're gonna keep moving. This next thing here is, um, I wear I wear this all the time. When it's cold outside, I wear this all the time. This is a cowl and it's a double thick cowl. You can see it here. I made this with three different strands of yarn held together to marl them to create this gorgeous fabric. And it is just the most comfortable, don't wanna mess up the situation here. It is the most comfortable neck warmer underneath a jacket. Oh, I love it so much. When we were up in Brian Head, I wore this when we were outside every single time. I have some, I think I might have a good picture of it. You guys, I love this. I made this. When did I make this? I think I, yeah, February. This was a February finished object. And the kicker here is that I made this on my Centro knitting machine. I did not knit this with needles. I made this on my Centro knitting machine and I loved every bit of it. I actually love making these little cowls more than I like making hats because it's just more, I don't know, it just, it's perfect. It's perfect. You kind of, like having a cowl like this, it's something you love to have, but because it's double thick and you would have to do so much stockinette knitting, it may not be something you love to knit. But on the Centro, it takes like an hour and you have this beautiful piece that you wear all the time. I plan on doing a tutorial for, or not a tutorial, but kind of like a walkthrough on how I did this over on the Patreon. I love this so much. So this was on my Centro using four different skeins of yarn marled together, a great stash buster. But yeah, this was a great one. If you have any interest in a Centro knitting machine and you want to know my thoughts on that, I do have a video where I share my initial thoughts on the Centro knitting machine and I still feel that same way. I really love it. I don't regret purchasing one and I actually purchased a smaller version of the Addy as well. I think they're great. So this was made on my Centro and I love it. And I wear it all the time and holding it in my hand. Look at that cross section. Ugh, it's so good, so good. Okay, next. Okay, back in June, I was kind of going through this like wanting to, to de-stash and wanting to clear out a lot of clutter, get rid of things I didn't plan on finishing. And at that time, I think I was having a de-stash and I happened upon my habit, the, the work in progress project bag that was holding my habitation throw by Curious Handmade. Okay, I am recording this from my phone now. It is so much easier to do this kind of thing, but you have to see what I just found. And I knew I had this, but it just kind of reoccurred to me. So look at this. All right, this is, you guys, I don't even know if I remember what this is, but it's by Helen Stewart. It's a design that is, I think it's, I can't remember what this is called. I'll pop it up on the screen if I can remember. And this is it. And I remember in the video, I was doing a little vlog about de-stashing. And I remember in the video saying that I'm going to frog all of this and reclaim all of this yarn and then de-stash all of it because it's all samples of fiber for the people yarn and all of this and this. But while I was recording that video, I kind of had this epiphany, this moment where I realized like, no, why would I do that? This is literally how much I had, except it was on a needle with live stitches, okay? It was, it was this much. And I remember thinking like, why would I do that? That I should just bind it off. And I have this really cute triangle bandana scarf situation that's completely functional. None of the work goes to waste or whatever. None of the yarn has to be, you know, reclaimed. And it's beautiful. It's really, really pretty. And that was exactly what I did. And so I know that it doesn't seem like I knit this in 2023, but it is something that was categorized as properly finished in 2023. And I'm so glad that I did because it's really a very lovely kind of throw on bandana shawl thing. 
I love it. And it's the habitation throw. So obviously it's intended to be much bigger than this and a square, but it works. It works as a little kind of a deep triangle shawl. And I've been um, considering putting some big like tassels on the corners just to give it a little extra length or maybe even just tassels here to give these a little bit more length to match up with this. But you guys like it's so cool. I love that I chose to just bind it off and call it a day because it's a completely functional piece of knitwear or knitting accessories. And it's beautiful. I mean, the colors. How pretty are the colors? So yeah, so that is my habitation shawl. And I do, I need to add, I really do need to add the tassels. I did, uh, I did videos about this, guys. All of this is uh, mentioned in podcast episodes um, and I'll link to them. If I, if I remember, but go back through the archives and you'll find these videos where I talk all about this. But I love, I love this. I love that it is living a life and not just frogged and who knows what. So that's my habitation throw by Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart. And it's fantastic. Okay, while we're talking shawls, let's go ahead and move on to my hollow shawl by Melody Hoffman. This is a relatively recent cast off. I want to say I um, finished this in August and I finished it early. I didn't complete the whole project because I was getting to this place where I felt like it was just going to be too much shawl for me and just too big. And so I decided to cast off where you see it right now, thinking that this would give me just enough shawl to have like I don't know, not a bandana style, but just what I need, something lightweight that I can wear in the spring and the fall, and even sometimes in the winter bunched up under a coat to give me a little extra layer and have it be really a pretty kind of neutral piece. I knit this using a 50% merino, 50% cotton yarn for Fiber for the People, which is my hand dyed yarn um, that I sell. And this is the colorway water. And I love this colorway. I'm telling you, it's kind of like a neutral that we didn't know we needed. It's this gorgeous kind of eucalyptus green and it's lovely. So this is um, a fingering weight shawl. Really, really fun pattern to work. You create all these undulating sections with short rows, which keep it really interesting. And you don't have any of those super long rows that you would have when knitting a really long shawl. They're relatively short because they're short rows and it just kind of keeps things moving along. So this is my hollow shawl. It does kind of have a little bit of a weird shape. And that's, I think, has something to do with the way I bound off. I probably bound off a little tighter than I should have. Um, and maybe also the way that I blocked it, but it's pretty. I, um, I'll pop a picture up of me wearing it here so that you can see it. <clears throat> it's not the easiest thing to put on and style. Like I can't, it's hard for me to just, I don't know, it's cute, but it's got these really long spindly bits here. So that's, that's my hollow shawl. It always has kind of been one of those things. I talk about it a lot in the videos where I mention this, that it's just hard for me to know how to wear this. These are kind of all crinkled because I've had them knotted. Um, but yeah, so hollow shawl by Melody Hoffman. I like it. I don't love it. Um, and that's more to do with the practicality of it for me, um, less the pattern. The pattern's beautiful and beautifully written. I love Melody Hoffman. Um, it's just the, it's just the way that it wears, I think. It's kind of hard for me to just throw it on and go, but I do like it. And I do recommend the pattern. If you're a shawl knitter and you have you want something new to work on that's relatively simple and easy to throw on and wear with things, this is a really good one for that. So Hollow Shawl by Melody Hoffman. Moving on to this one, which is notoriously hard to see because it's black, okay? But this is one of my more recent finished objects. I will pop up proper pictures so you're not just looking into a black void. But this is my little black tee. This is a completely improvised pattern by yours truly. I kind of drafted this. I sketched it out and drafted some notes of what I wanted from this pattern and improvised it. It's just a top down short sleeve, cap sleeve really, a little t-shirt sweater. And it's kind of a really classic basic t-shirt and I love it so much. In fact, pulling it out of my sweater drawer makes me realize I want to keep it out and wear it. It's, it's short sleeve and the weather has been 
kind of in such a way that short sleeves just aren't as practical, even if you cover it with a cardigan. I don't know. I think that, that I think I'm making stuff up, but I love this. Um, the pictures I pop up on the screen will do this more justice. Absolutely. But I talk all about the process on several episodes, you know, back in the summer and, and it's great. I do have plans. I had mentioned that I was not going to write a pattern for this, that this was always just going to stay my little improvised thing. However, as I've been going through the process of writing a pattern for the Franken sweater over on the Patreon, I feel like it's stoking something inside of me that's making me want to kind of go down that rabbit hole with this project here because I have all of the notes and because now I know how to grade out patterns and I kind of want to write a pattern for this. So keep posted. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, that's my little black tea and I really love it. Hopefully the pictures that I pop up do it justice, but this is one of my favorites for sure. It goes so well with just kind of my aesthetic, my wardrobe, it's black. I love black. Yeah. Oh, oh, and this is knit. You know what? I have some of this yarn left over. Hold on. I actually have a good amount of this left over. This is by the company About Strings. It's um, yarn you can purchase on Amazon. I'll link to it down below. This is called Lazy Wool. It is 55% extra fine merino, un, uh, non superwash, and 45% cotton. It's black. And each of these little balls is 109 yards. I think this whole project, I can't remember how much this weighs. And I think I talk about that on the videos where I mentioned this. I think this whole project took maybe three of these. And that's not that bad. But that is what I used to make this. And it's fantastic yarn. It's beautiful yarn. It's, a, it's budget friendly for sure. I'll link to it down below and you guys can check it out. So there we go. My little black tee. And I love it. This is the Franken sweater. You guys have heard me talk so much about this. I know you're probably getting tired of it, but sorry, not sorry. Um, I love this sweater. This is, this is the way I show sweaters when I don't have them on. It's the pull it up to the chest, left arm out. I don't know what this is, but it's a thing I do. So there's my Franken sweater. Obviously proper pictures are gonna be popped up on the screen. I started this in the winter of 2022 and finished it uh, March of 2023. And I stink and love this sweater so much that I am writing a pattern for it and doing a complete walkthrough quest of the process with folks on the Patreon. And it is some of the most fun I've had knitting ever. And I love it. But that is my Franken sweater. It's beautiful. It's fully improvised. There is no pattern for this yet. Information on that is forthcoming, but I love this. I knit this using... Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the Birch Tweed colorway paired with Fiber for the People Surrey Silky Undyed. So there's no color on this at all. This is all natural color. That's how Fisherman's Wool is. It's completely raw virgin wool in its natural color. And it's so beautiful. I love it so much. I love it so much. I'm making another one, but that's the Franken sweater. It's a classic. What can I say? Well, that's it for me, folks. All of the things that I made with wool in 2023. This was fun. I don't know why I've been, I've been kind of like grouchy about these, like everything I knit videos in, in 2022, 2023. And I don't know why. I think it's because, okay, like real talk for a minute. I think it's because you become tired of emphasis being placed in creative in the creative realm okay of emphasis being placed on quantity and i feel like so often i see these thumbnails probably like the thumbnail you're going to see for this video but i see these thumbnails of just stacks of sweaters look at all the sweaters i knit in 2023 and there's this like suggestion of the, that there's value here because of the quantity. And if you know me, and if you know what I talk about in this channel, you know that I'm not that person. I'm much more a quality over quantity person. And so when I've seen the thumbnails come across my YouTube, I've just kind of thought, you're pushing, you're pushing that idea. You're pushing that notion that the reason this is valuable or that this video, this content is valuable is because I'm going to show you the quantity of things that I've knit. Now, in everybody who might, you know, in the defense of these people making these videos, I've watched very few of these videos. And as far as I know, 
Um, who's to say? They, it might not be what I see. And I think that that's kind of reading a book by its cover, judging, excuse me, judging a book by its cover. And so, hey, I, I get it. I totally get it. But I do still stand firm by my thoughts on we need to step back from trying to emphasize quantity in the creative realm. Um, and I'm sure in many different realms, but especially in the creative realm, especially something that's supposed to be kind of a slow movement, right? Um, we need to emphasize less quantity and emphasize more quality and joy because I think that's what's really important. And so I look here at my stack of items. I have one sweater, a little, you know, short sleeved sweater here. One shawl that I actually did not knit on at all in 2023, but just finished, bound off. One shawl that I did complete. Something I made on a knitting machine. A bag that I made to kind of honor my grandma and provide a little fresh makeover for something that is meaningful and special. A couple pairs of socks. This one, I knit most of it in 2021. And that's my stack. And I look back on that and I think, yeah, I'm proud of that. Many of these things were not casted on and casted off in 2023. And it's not a heaping load of hand knit sweaters, but I feel like every single one of these things has a story attached to it, has a, there's something about it here that makes it special and makes it worth talking about. And I think that that's cool. And so, yeah, it is a stack, but it's a stack of things that have meaning and quality. And that's, I think, what it's all about. So thank you guys so much for joining me for this little video today as I jump on the bandwagon. I think it's fun. Let me know down below in the comment section, what was your favorite thing that you knit in 2023? Only one thing, only one thing. What is the one thing that you look back on 2023 um, that you, that was your favorite? That was your favorite project? Whether it was knitting or spinning or weaving or whatever, working with wool, what was your favorite thing? Or you know what? Not even that. What was your favorite thing that you created in 2023? One thing. And, uh, and let us know. And I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. All right, folks, if you took value from today's video or enjoyed yourself at any point, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. If you would like to also further support the channel and if you find that the content here brings you joy and information and inspiration, head over to the Patreon. The link is down below in the description box and see if becoming a member over there is something for you. Your support is greatly appreciated. Until we meet again for Sunday's episode of the Knitting Podcast, where I have lots of knitting to share with you. Happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.